Hello everyone, Alyssa here. Today I wanted to share a flower installation I created using exactly 100 stems of white hydrangea and agrawol. And I partnered with Botanical Brouhaha to source the white hydrangea from Valley Springs Flowers. She had recommended them and I really, really like their vibe. They're really kind, they're really responsive regarding customer service, and they do a lot for their community. They actually support a local school financially, and they also visit to read and just spend time with the kids because the school doesn't have a lot of resources. So I thought that was really special. They also are certified by the Rainforest Alliance, ensuring that they are taking proper care of their land and their employees. So I thought that was really neat. And then the other resource I'm using here is Agrawol, which is a compostable floral foam. I do not use flower foam anymore because I learned of how toxic it was and it's made of plastic, stays on the earth forever. It creates a lot of health issues over time. So I nixed the idea of ever using flower foam and I was really happy when Agrawol came out of the woodworks and presented a product that I could feel really good using. So that is what I am using in this video. So what I started out with was two large shelves from an industrial shelving unit I have. I laid one of the large metal shelves on the ground and placed four sheets of agrawol. So you can get agrawol in either blocks or sheets. And I placed the sheets onto the shelving shelf. It's not a shelving unit, it's just a shelf. And then I placed a second shelf right on top, sandwiching the wool. And then I fastened the two shelves together on the edges just by twisting some wire around the two shelves. I did step on it to kind of make sure the shelves were tightly together so that the wool didn't, or so the agar wool didn't slide around. And then once I had that fastened, I just lifted it up. It stayed together great. And I fastened it to a two by four that is placed into an iron base that I bought off of Etsy. I'll share the link. That was originally for a HIPAA structure. So there are four of them and they come with two by fours to kind of design a large arbor or a HIPAA. So I love using these bases and two, you know, two by fours of different heights for all kinds of projects. They're great to have on hand. And that's exactly what, what I used for the right side is one of those iron bases with a two by four coming out. And then I attached these bird seed holder cages. They're called bird seed cakes, I think. And these are the holders for the bird seed cakes. And they work really great to put either agro wool in there or moss or chicken wire. And then you can easily fasten them with zip ties or wire to whatever structure you need to design on. So that is what is attached to that two by four. And lastly, I did use a big industrial trash bag at the very bottom of that wall that I created, if you can see on the ground, because agarwool does release a lot of water after you've soaked it. So definitely if you're on site somewhere and you don't want to be swimming, (laughs) you need to have something to catch the water. You can't just design in it freely. So this um, trash bag actually worked really well and I never had a pool of water because it was all coming straight down into the bag. And then by the end of the design, the bag was completely covered. So let's get started into the design. So I really like designing with just one element for installations because you can kind of relax. You can, it's kind of like you get into a rhythm and you are going for a certain shape, but outside of that, it's a lot less to think about. And I think the agrawol is a really great tool for installations, especially for products like hydrangea or, you know, more sensitive flowers like garden roses or lilac, things that really need hydration. And I will say that I left this installation up for quite a while. <laughs> And these hydrangea were still going strong after about four days in the agrawol. So that was pretty impressive. Um, Impressed with both Valley Springs and agrawol together. They worked well together. So whenever I create a one ingredient installation, I do tend to pull apart whatever that ingredient is, unless it's like a rose or something. But if it's, you know, Asiatic lilies or hydrangea in this case, I don't want to put the full-on ball or the full-on bunch of flowers, the whole stem of multiple flowers in every single time. It's nice to pull it apart and use smaller elements so that you don't, it doesn't feel really bulky. So that is definitely what I'm doing with the hydrangea. Some of the time I'm using the large 
bloom as it is. And other times I'm pulling it apart so I can just use the little pieces to cover up the agar wool and the mechanics. So one thing to keep in mind when you're using really straight structures, straight structures like this, rather than using something that's naturally curved. So if you have like an iron structure that is a curved shape, you don't have to work as hard to get, attain that curved shape because it's already curved. But if you're working on something like this, that is a straight two by four or straight wall like this, you do need to kind of visualize the shape you want it to take by the end, because otherwise you're going to be left with two really straight shapes that are going to mimic the exact mechanics underneath. So in my head, I really wanted this to create kind of an illusion of an arch. So I knew I wanted the very top right, the, the area I'm kind of working on there, to come out and over towards the other structure to give the arch shape. And in order to achieve that shape, I knew I needed to keep the stems really close to the structure in the middle back. So if the whole thing had long stems sticking out everywhere, I would completely lose that arch shape. So kind of where I am placing flowers now, I knew that area needed to have less long stems so that it could keep that arch shape. When you're designing something like this on site, it's really nice to have multiple people because most of this is just covering the mechanics. So if you had someone helping you, they could just be focusing on putting really short stems in to cover the mechanics while you could be designing, you know, the really the longer stems that kind of give it its more artful shape. So a lot of this is just me trying to cover up. So we'll, we'll speed past this. trying to cover up the structure, not my lower back, clearly. <laughs> So just like I have a shape in mind for the large kind of wall structure on the left, I also have a shape in mind for the right. And if you don't have a shape in mind when you're creating an installation, you could get in trouble, especially if you're going to be on a time crunch at a, you know, an event set up. So I would recommend doing some kind of sketch so you have a plan that you feel good about. But along the same lines, I just wanted it to create an arch. So this this little structure on the right, I just wanted it to kind of curve towards the larger wall. So whenever you want something to feel really nice and airy, sometimes what people will do is just put a ton of long stems. And what that creates is a really consistent shape and it will just feel like a blob. So you really have to make sure some of the areas are super tight against the mechanics while other areas gradually flow away from the mechanics and have some really long stems. You just can't put long stems everywhere. It will kind of negate the whole design you're going for. When you're creating an installation for an event and you're in a time crunch and your heart's probably racing and people are arriving and you're feeling nervous or you're getting in your head, great if that doesn't happen to you, but it's definitely happened to me. One thing that I just have to consciously remind myself of is you can stand back. You can observe it. If you just stay in the thick of it with your face right in the flowers the whole time, you really have no idea what you're creating. So you really, even if you're feeling anxious, you're having some anxiety about getting done, you really just still need to stand back and be willing to make some changes.
And if you have it in your mind that you're willing to make some changes, then you automatically are open to seeing some things that you need to change. (laughs) If you've already made up your mind and you think, okay, I place this down and I move forward, I never go back, (laughs) then you're not even, you know, you're not even going to observe like, oh, what happens if I move this to here? So you need to stay open-minded and be observing your design the whole time, thinking, you know, how would moving this one stem change the design? And as you are thinking that way, as you're designing, you will probably come to some revelations that will stick with you for the remainder of your career. So it's a really good learning experience to stay open-minded while you are creating. Something else I included in this installation design, which I did not talk about in the beginning, were these clear dishes that contain hairpin flower holders. Sorry, my brain was drawing a blank there for a second. And they are great to place on the ground by an ins- by you know large scale installation because they can make it feel more natural. It enables you to just place a few blooms away from the installation. So it gives it more of a gradual growing effect as though it's kind of growing out of the ground, not just straight out of one place. So that is something I have on the ground on either side that I just placed a few stems of hydrangea that just let it look like it's kind of spilling away from the structure. So I know at this point I am noticing that straight inner edge, which it's hard to avoid when you're using a big wall structure like this, but I really wanted to try out this idea. But I was noticing it and I was thinking ahead, okay, I definitely need to save some stems to, I don't know, fix that edge up in some way because it's a little too straight. It looks like I am definitely designing on a straight panel and I did not want it to look like that. So now I'm pulling apart my remaining stems of hydrangea so that I am left with a long stem and a tiny little bloom at the end. So I can add some more airy, just like that, some airier, smaller floater flowers that don't feel as big. So it'll kind of lighten up the edges of the design. And then I can use the little pieces that I tear off to cover up any agar wool or mechanics that are still showing. Glad I just took that out because I thought that was a waste of a stem. Just got, just kind of blended right in, but that's much better. Like a sports commentator right now. (laughs) Evaluating my actions. Oh, got Phil. I knew I really wanted to get that stem in to soften or get that flower in to soften the stems that were showing right there. It was looking really leggy, too many, too much stem visibility. Good choice. 
So again, that's kind of along the same lines of you don't want it to be too predictable. So even though I wanted a specific shape, you can you can add a stem that goes against the shape you're going for. So it feels a little bit less planned. And there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this super simple installation with the right mechanics can be easy enough. I would highly recommend if you need to source a large amount of white hydrangea or roses, um, you can check out Valley Springs Farms or Valley Springs Flowers website to see what they have available. Working with them was really easy and I recommend it. And then agrowool, I also recommend, I would say it's easier to use if you have a really hard, stiff stem. So hydrangea was great. Peonies have been great. Lilies have been great. I would not count on doing a big installation of something like calla lilies or ranunculus or muscari in agrowool. That would be really hard. But with um, the proper planning of what you will order, the agrowool can make your designing really, really easy easy for your event day and sustainable. Thanks for tuning in.